This is a fast modern dinghy, the Hornet, being driven hard with the crew sitting out on a sliding seat. She goes about, turning almost in her own length, and they're off on a new course, the crew acting as a piece of movable ballast. Such exhilarating sailing is possible only after considerable practice and the Central Council of Physical Recreation on the right line. With a good sailing breeze to help us, and the facilities of the Royal Corinthian Yacht Club open to us, let's make a start with this enterprise just being brought over the ramp and down the slipway. A closer look shows the three wire stays, the standing rigging, hold the mast in position. A single four stay is fixed to the bow, while the two side stays are carried aft of the mast. The mast itself is stepped on deck with a timber port underneath to take the weight down to the keel. Under the foredeck is a large buoyancy bag and two more are lashed along each side. In case of a capsize, they keep the boat and her crew afloat. The rudder blade is adjustable for depth and of course the centre plate too can be raised or lowered to offer lateral resistance. This is the force day. The leading edge of the fossil or jib is fixed to it with small clips and the head of the jib is connected to its halyard. That's the rope that will hoist the sail. With a shackle to the main halyard and the lap rope on the leading edge of the sail slides into a groove on the aft face of the mast. The main halyard runs over a sheave at the top of the mast, down through the hollow center and under another sheave at the bottom. Pulling on this halyard hoists the mainsail. The foot of the sail is stretched tightly along a wooden spar, the boom. The jib is generally hoisted after the mainsail. When sails are set, each halyard is coiled and hung on its own cleat. It's ready for instant use and cannot become tangled with any other rope. A wire kicking strap fitted near the foot of the mast prevents the boom lifting from its normal position. Jib sheets control the fossil. They're handled by the crew and there's one for each side, port and starboard. The main sheet is fixed to the end of the boom and it passes over a couple of blocks to give the helmsman a better purchase as our craft sails away with an instructor and two students under training. On this figure of eight course, look first at boat number one. She has the wind over her starboard beam. That's the right-hand side looking forward from the stern. At position two, she's ready to go about by turning into the wind, figure three, with sails blowing along the boat, and she completes the turn at four. Now she sails with the wind over her port beam till she reaches her next turning point at five. And here it is, ready about, turn into the wind, boom swings across, crew duck under it, and move out again to the windward side. At the next turning point, again the tiller is pushed away, downwind, the bows turn into the wind, round to the new course. Skipper and crew move windward. Notice that the crew releases the jib in going about and see how the sails flutter without driving the boat as the wind blows along them halfway through the turn. The figure of eight provides continuous training. The beginner learns to steer and can practice luffing to bring the bows closer to the wind or, of course, the opposite movement bearing away from the wind. Ready about again, push the tiller downwind, bows turn into the wind, the sails flutter fore and aft and she's round to her new course with the skipper and crew moving across to windward. 
The boat at A cannot sail directly against the wind to B. She can sail about 45 degrees off the wind to point X. On this course, she's close hauled because her jib sheet and main sheet are hauled into the limit and she's on port tack, the wind blowing over her hot bow. X, she goes about, turning through a right angle. She again sails close hauled, now on starboard tack, wind over starboard bow, to her objective, B. This is tacking. For the same movement in practice, look at the Hornet, close hauled on a port tack, sheets well in, and crew sitting to windward. The helmsman pushes the tiller downwind to go about to a new course at right angles to the first, and so he gains distance to windward. Now the Enterprise on port tack. Tiller downwind, and, and so around to starboard tack, with the crew moving across to balance the boat. Here is a Merlin rocket tacking towards us, beating to windward on a zigzag course. In heavy weather, she's reefed right down using only a mainsail, and that from a smaller boat, the Firefly. Notice she still sails at 45 degrees to the wind and makes a right angle turn for each new tack. Under reduced sail, she beats to windward in complete safety. Boat number one is running with the wind blowing over her port quarter. She's being pushed along by the wind, with her boom and sails out to starboard. If she turns her bows to starboard, figure two, her stern will be presented to the wind during the turn, and her sail must be blown across the boat to the port side. This is jibing. In a strong wind, it's no gentle movement. The sail is blown across and must be controlled. This hornet is ready to jive. Her stern crosses the wind direction and her boom is blown to the opposite side. Watch again. The tiller is pulled upwind, the stern presented to the wind, and as the boom is blown across, the crew moves under it to balance the boat. Now see the contrast as they go about again. Tiller downwind, bows into wind, sails flatter amidships, and they're round to a new course. For more precise training, the Enterprise jibes round a buoy. The tiller is pulled upwind, the stern crosses the wind direction, and the boom is blown to the other side. Approaching us, she goes about. Tiller down, bows into the wind, sails flutter fore and aft, and she's round to her new course. From a different angle, watch the helmsman pull the tiller upwind to jibe and see how he hands the boom across as it swings. It's a controlled jibe, even though he loses his hat. At all times, skipper and crew must balance the boat against the force of wind on the mainsail. If they fail to maintain balance, they're liable to capsize. In the case of the Hornet, this is no serious matter, and the skipper doesn't really get wet. He rates the boat by standing on the center plate, and then brings her on course while the crew scrambles in. With three people aboard, a capsize may cause a little more difficulty, but everyone wears a life jacket, and the skipper disposes his crew in safe positions before righting the boat in the normal way. He sends one of the crew aboard to bail her nearly dry before the others climb in. On returning to the slipway, one of the crew must wash all trace of salt water out of the sails. And of course, the boat too will be sluiced with fresh water and drained while she's still on the ramp. At position one, a boat is running with the wind over the port quarter when a man falls overboard. The skipper jibes immediately, figure two, then brings the boat quickly to a close hauled course, figure three. The man in the water must be ahead and visible on the skipper's side of the boat. He may be picked up by laughing. Here's the Enterprise running when a man falls overboard. 
the skipper jibes immediately, hauls in main sheet, and then laps up to the man in the water. There should be little way on the boat as the man is picked up. Here, a man has fallen overboard while the boat is beating to windward. The skipper wears ship. That is, he bears away until the wind is abeam, figure two. He continues to turn until the wind is astern, figure three. Then he jibes to four and brings the boat close hauled on a new tack, figure five. The man in the water will again be ahead and on the helmsman's side. A laugh will reach him. A man falls overboard and the skipper bears away in preparation for wearing ship. For clarity, he slows down this movement to show reaching, then running with the sail right out before jibing. Now he hauls in the main sheet to sail on the new tack and finally laughs up into the wind to pick up the man. On this triangular course, the three marks, or buoys, must be left to port. Boat A has a free wind from starboard as she reaches for the first mark. She jibes round to position B, and now she runs with the wind over her port quarter. At the second mark, she turns to windward, figure C, and hardens her sheets to sail close hauled on port tack. She goes about at the third mark, to complete the last leg, as in figure A. Reaching with a wind from starboard, jibe round the first mark, the tall post in the water, leaving it to port. Now a run with mainsail well out to starboard. At the second mark, a boy just ahead, luff up to windward, harden sheets, and sail a close hauled course on port tack until the skipper can look across at right angles to his course and see a clear way past the next boy, his third mark. Go about here and sail the last leg towards the post with a free wind from starboard. When you reverse direction round a triangle, leaving all marks to starboard, conditions are completely different. And if three or four boats are using the same course, there's bound to be some element of competition at least enough to make every beginner in the fleet think seriously about the set of his sails in order to get the best speed out of his boat on each leg of the course. This could be the beginning of an interest in racing or cruising, and few other sports are quite so absorbing as sailing your own craft, whether she be a stately keel boat or a small dinghy you've built for yourself. You'll always find